Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis if you're new a very warm welcome to you and if you're returning an equally warm welcome to you and if you find the analysis that i do every week useful please don't forget to like subscribe and share as it's a free way to support the channel and it gets the quality content out to traders that really would benefit from uh, this type of analysis so um, let's get into the week ahead on trading economics and uh, zoom in a little bit and this week the Fed and the Reserve Bank of Australia will be releasing policy meeting minutes while central banks in China and Africa set to uh, meet to set interest rates um, so we're looking at the Federal Reserve and the RBA um, for uh, for monetary guidance, I guess, of what they're going to do with regards to interest rates and interest rate and monetary policy. Also, flash PMI surveys for the US, UK, Eurozone, Japan and Australia will give an insight about the state of the global economy. Other important releases include the US building permits and housing starts, Canada and the UK inflation data that would be important, and retail trade, Japan, um, and Eurozone first quarter GDP growth rates that definitely be important for um, Japan and especially Europe all eyes will be on that China industrial production and Australia employment figures so a very busy week depending on the currency pairs uh, that you are looking to trade so now let's get into the technicals and uh, some fundamentals as well starting off as we usually do on the dollar index the dxy and um the dollar is uh suffering a bit and i say suffering in in the sense that it's um you know being uh, being sold off which is actually positive for the um for the uh, federal reserve in a currency war which we're pretty much in um, uh, this competitive devaluations. The only problem that the Federal Reserve have is uh, is inflation, right? And I say the only problem. They have a number of problems, but they have in, they have uh, inflation problems and also a GDP and jobs problem. But uh, recently, the Fed officials have six reasons to bet inflation spike will pass. And why is that really important? It's because if inflation doesn't, um, if inflation really gets out of hand, then they're going to be forced to act and raise interest rates which is basically what they don't want to do because if they raise interest rates too soon then it really hurt it can hurt the economy um and the economy at the moment um, we had a massive jobs miss um i think it was last week or the week before so the fed are very cautious with wanting to raise rates and borrowing costs because it could really um, hurt the economy before it really gets going so they're in a bit of a conundrum at the moment and uh, the federal reserve are really kind of talking down the uh, the inflation um, uh, uh, numbers you know uh, they're, they're looking for an average inflation target of two percent um which at the moment um, it looks like it might be going um, a lot higher than that, but it says much is at stake. The Fed's new policy framework approved last August pledges more patience in viewing inflation. Now it aims for an average of 2% over time, including some overshooting for past misses and want to achieve more inclusive employment uh, uh, that aids lower income workers and minorities. So um, again, they're talking down the expectation. The word, I think the word they're using is um, is is not transis transitory. I think that's what it's, what it's known as. And basically what they're saying is, is that um, it's not it's not transitioning to high inflation. It's just a little bit of a spike, a little bit of a blip, and it will come down um, soon. And the average will work out. So there's no need to look to even high rates. So um, yeah, they're in a bit of a, a, a they're a bit a bit of a conundrum at the moment. So um, the the general consensus actually is to continue to you know short the uh, the dollar. So with the fundamentals at play what you're looking to do is look for um selling opportunities and confluences i guess using the dollar index and the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against the basket of currencies like the euro the yen and the pound and uh so what you're looking for pretty much is is a pullback to potential supply zones and if it starts to sell off there then you're looking for sell trades um on the dollar yen dollar swiss for example if there is some good news and positive news around the uh, the US dollar um, potentially you know growing GDP jobs numbers etc um, 
then you this could actually be a decent area to look for some long trades on the dollar but i think the general consensus is for a uh, a weaker dollar until the data supports the uh, the, the buy narrative moving on to the uh, dollar yen and the dollar yen at the moment is um, again in a bit of a predicament the yen isn't necessarily the best pair to buy in a risk on environment and the risk on environment means that the uh, investors looking for a, a higher return on their investment the Japanese yen is really in the minus 0.1 meaning that it's going to cost you uh, minus 0.1 percent or 0.1 percent to keep your money in the bank so um and with uh, you know the uh, the dollar um, not doing so well, you probably may see a bit of a range start to come into play. Um, so at the moment, this is a, quite a difficult pair to trade um, when it comes to uh, looking to buy or sell. Obviously, I say obviously, but the the tint or my 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 uh, my um, bias, I guess, would be uh, to uh, maybe some dollar upside, but it's it's a bit too difficult to uh, to kind of tell fundamentally. So for me, I'm personally staying up. But if you do want to get you know long or short, then I would say this is probably the time now to get look for short trades or just a bit higher right here. Probably delete that upper supply zone. I would say that's probably where the best zone is and. Uh, probably down here as we can see if prices do break through that demand zone the 108 is probably um, a decent buy if you're looking to buy the dollar against the yen moving on to the dollar swiss the dollar swiss um we uh, again got some more selling uh the swiss franc again just similar to the uh, the, the the yen is a risk um, is a safe haven currency meaning that the, the swiss franc tends to do well in a risk uh, off environment as money will flow tend to flow into uh the the the, uh, the swiss franc um but with a uh, an interest rate of 0 0.7 minus 0 0.75 um, it's the worst out of all the um, the the major uh, the major economies that we trade. So um, personally, I wouldn't necessarily even look to trade this pair. Again, not financial advice. You can do what you want to do, but I'm just letting you know you know what where where my where my stance on that is. But um, it's there are easier trades out there. So um, if you do want to get long on this, this is a decent opportunity to get long. Um, not the best demand zone, daily demand zone in, in the world. Um, there's a few more things I would like to see before I would look to ever get long on the uh, on the dollar Swiss. And uh, if you, again, if you do want to continue uh, getting short and really kind of ride this uh, recent downward trend from you know the beginning of April, then you're looking at prices moving back up to this you know just above this 91 cent area, and then looking for short trades again in uh, conjunction with the dollar index uh, sell-offs. Looking at the dollar CAD and dollar CAD, this has been. You know the uh, the CAD being actually quite uh, quite strong with the, especially with the Bank of Canada looking to taper um, uh, and remove uh, support. And when I say remove support, they're basically um, not looking to you know quantitative ease, print money, etc., and devalue their currency. You're pretty much seeing the the effect of 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 that. So. Uh, again, the, the Bank of Canada potentially looking to raise rates, you know, within the next, uh, you know, two years. Uh, the market is pricing that in ahead of time. So uh, for me, it's shorts all the way for now. Any pullbacks to this supply zone will be a, a decent short. If you are looking to get long on this currency pair, you really want to see proof of value and prices, you know, m basically move to the upside to prove that there is, you know, the dollar is a potential bargain down here, then a pullback into that demand zone before looking at any kind of long trades. Mo uh, moving on to the uh, uh, New Zealand dollar and New Zealand dollar, I think New Zealand is, 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 is a trade. There's a currency that is a buy and prices did come down to this nice demand zone last week uh, and this was a decent buy um, so uh, the New Zealand dollar doing well in the risk on environment uh, the dollar US dollar not doing so well so um, so yeah this was this was always a potential buy um, and if prices do come down again I would say this level's probably been used several times so you probably want to wait for 
prices to come down to this zone before looking at any kind of long trades if you get the opportunity if you want to get short if there's a change in uh, in, in sentiment on the US dollar or even the New Zealand dollar and I do think this area this 70 uh, 0.73 for um, level is a really decent zone to get short technically but I don't really like this pair for a uh, for a sell trade um, if my bias is to the uh, to the to the upside as far as a buy on the New Zealand dollar uh, moving on to the pound dollar and the pound has been going from strength to strength especially since um, last week's um, uh, uh, US uh, jobs miss we saw pretty much prices move to the upside as to be expected bit of a pullback and then you know we're looking at more potential upside so um, at the moment again looking at the fundamentals the UK economy picked up momentum in March towards the end of the lockdown so the UK economy gained momentum in March as Britain's geared up for the lifting of coronavirus restrictions and gross domestic products rose to a stronger than expected 2.1% following a revised 0.7 increase in February so um, again nothing but positive uh, news around the, the, the pound there is a bit of a scare though uh, with regards to the Indian variant of the coronavirus I think four people five people have passed away due to um, uh, in in the UK, so it's found that the variant has found its way um, to the UK shores. So um, that could have a, a, an effect really on the pound if it starts to get out of hand. Um, but let's see, because Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, uh, will make you know certain choices regarding um, the reopening of the economy. If 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 you know it starts to potentially affect uh, the, the the UK, then you could see a potential selling opportunity. But that's so then you're looking for short trades here but i think overall um it's it's really buy trades um for the foreseeable future um as long as the data supports the narrative moving on to the dollar uh euro dollar and the euro dollar so um there was a really nice trade set up around here intraday uh cpr um uh, demand zone set up that um i shared with the guys in the trading group and it really worked out well for for anyone who took the, those trades but um, from a daily supply and demand zone perspective um, we really I would say probably that's where the supply zone is um, there wasn't really an opportunity unless prices came down to this area here before looking at long trades the general consensus is for uh, the uh, euro dollar to reach around the one to five area so we've definitely got about three 350 pips to the upside if prices do continue to you know get uh to to kind of rise and the euro area to kind of support that narrative european economic outlook upgraded on fiscal fund and vaccines so the euro economy will grow more quickly this year than previously forecasted uh as the region's vaccination program uh, campaign sorry gathers speed fiscal support Port is rolled out and a strong global rebound helps exports so um, a lot of the things that I uh, I teach in the private members group um, and things that we look for you know to help really kind of uh, make our trading decisions and our bias so um, been saying for uh, a week or two now to kind of get long on the uh, on the euro dollar and you'll see in that really kind of play out so any pullbacks to levels of you know daily demand are going to be uh, really kind of buying opportunities but for now um, if you do want to get short on the on the uh, euro dollar you may want to uh, wait for a potential move you know for, probably from now maybe a bit higher before looking at short trades if the uh, euro gdp does disappoint then that could actually be an opportunity to actually buy the us dollar versus the euro or another currency you know uh, sell uh, the euro against another currency or short the euro against another currency euro yen and uh, i just haven't been able to get into this trade i really wanted to get involved uh, down here but there's really been um, no no setups per se um, for me to kind of get involved in this and prices have really moved like about 300 pips so I've got to be patient patience is you know um, something that we need in, in trading so looking for a potential pullback I do like this zone here this demand zone between this 131.41 and this 130.98 um, 
uh, zone so there are demand zones here as well technically you do have a demand zone right there as well but I, pref I would prefer price to pull back a bit more deeper pull back better bargain price and within this zone I think that's nice we've also got um, a bit of uh, um, uh, confluence where we've got um, some uh, resistance here and support so there's some traders uh, that trade support and resistance that will add to the demand equation around here hopefully and I do think that pullback is really nice for a potential buy especially with the uh, the euro on the up and up and the yen in fact struggling um, with the virus uh, recently moving on to the Aussie dollar and the Aussie dollar um, We've got, let me just uh, move this here. I think the, really the play <clears throat> is again, more Aussie dollar upside. So when prices came back down into this demand zone this week, again, you saw lots of buying going on. So uh, I think more upside potential on the Aussie dollar, especially with the Australian dollar, um, uh, uh, I guess, strengthening in the risk on environment. You've got commodity currencies, um, I say commodities, sorry, like iron ore, copper, oil making, you know, highs and stuff like that. So um, very bullish risk on the environment out of the two. Uh, my bias would be to an Australia, for an Australian dollar long, but this, this is a decent area to get short if, again, there is a narrative change around the US dollar. And also as well, this, uh, this higher zone would be really nice for a potential short technically, but not necessarily fundamentally. Uh, moving on to the Aussie yen and the Aussie yen just keeps going from strength to strength in the risk on environment all you what you should see is basically what's been happening now right we've been basically talking about this uh, for the past uh, six months I said last year uh, October November times to get long on the Aussie uh, yen haven't changed that bias and you're pretty much seeing what's been going on um, with the Australian dollar and the Japanese yen. So this has been driven fundamentally. Price is not really driven technically unless it's really kind of short term, you know, intraday, which is basically just manipulations and liquidity hunting. So um, again, a pullback into a nice demand zone um, from the, uh, um, from a yen, for, sorry, from an Australian dollar perspective, making higher highs, higher lows, yeah, higher high, higher low. This is a bargain area. And then prices came back in looking for a potential long trade. I do want prices to pull back a bit more before looking at getting long or if prices can pull back into this zone here, this 83 area and just below, uh, that would be even better for a long trade. But um, let's see what happens. If the narrative does change, so for example, if there is more risk off, let's say for example, an outbreak, a uh, virus outbreak or the uh, Australian dollar has a bit of a miss when it comes to the, um, uh, their jobs you know, report, then there could be a decent opportunity to look for potential short trades. Uh, one sec, change that to supply. Yeah, so maybe a short trade right now if, as prices go up into this zone here before looking at getting short. And finally looking at gold, and gold has been again a bit of a, um, a tough one if you are looking to short the dollar then the alternative rather than shorting um any kind of uh, currency pairs as far as you know shorting dollar swiss dollar you know dollar cad etc then you would probably look for buying gold right the only problem with is gold is that um is is the fact that inflation um is is driving um uh, gold but uh, we're in a risk on environment so in the risk on environment where stock market is making you know new highs and again maybe just pulling back a little bit but generally uh, the consensus is for you know more highs in the uh, for the uh, for the stock market you also have um, uh, commodities really making new highs um, gold for me is a bit of a bit of a tough buy if you are buying it it'd be purely based off of uh, dollar weakness and and inflation concerns so um uh, any kind of a uh, pullbacks to a decent zone maybe there or if prices make a new high then this would become a nice demand zone and you're looking for a pullback into that zone before looking at getting long on potential inflation concerns and dollar weakness um, but if you are looking for a potential uh, short trade and you see some dollar strength maybe some sort of jobs um, 
number, which is really good, and, uh, and GDP figures, then you could look for potential some short trades in and around this area here. But um, for now, I don't think it's necessarily the best buy in the world fundamentally, but everyone has their, you know, their, their bias on the US dollar. And uh, I would probably say if you are getting short on the dollar, then the bias really should be, you know, on foot with regards to gold and silver to, you know, the, the upside, I would say, is uh, is really the uh, probably the path of least resistance. So any pullbacks to demand zones is where you probably want to look for any kind of uh, long trades. Again, not financial advice, please do your own research. And uh, that brings us to the end of this week's analysis. Um, thanks for the comments as well, by the way. Keep them up. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And I will speak to you all soon. Hope you have a great trading week and take care.